Leading up to Election Day, our coverage included speaking to voters about the issues that matter most to them. You'll remember we heard from voters in Arizona's 2nd Congressional District, along with students at the University of Arizona. A day after the election, we caught up with Democrat Gary Jones and Republican John Dalton to get their thoughts. Christopher Conover picks up the discussion. And we have results to report tonight. The governor's race. This Were either of you surprised by the outcomes the last race. night? This one's still incredibly close. Well, as you can nationally uh, and locally, I would say not necessarily. Obviously, as coming from the Republican perspective. And they just called the race for you. Obviously. We would have obviously wished to have held onto the House of Representatives, but looking at election trends, you know, in years past, this is not something that's unusual. Uh, and I would concur. I, I wasn't necessarily surprised by anything except the buildup on the false rhetoric of uh, the immigration caravan. Uh, that was a surprise to me that that uh, took, appeared to take some traction and, uh, and was believed by a number of people. What do you think the issues that were driving this election were? And did the candidates speak to them enough to get voters out or did the candidates speak to just what they wanted to speak to? Well, I think that the uh, election was largely a referendum on Trump. And no matter what the candidates said, uh, some of them stayed away from that issue. For example, Kirsten Sinema stayed away from that issue uh, largely because she was uh, focusing not only on Democrats but trying to bring independents in, in under the blue tent. Um, but uh, many candidates shied away from taking Trump on in, in some places. On a national basis, some took it on uh, full on, like Beto and uh, Andrew Gillum and, and, and others, and lost. So I think the outcome of that uh, on that issue is, is mixed. Uh, I don't necessarily think it was a referendum against the president. I don't think looking at the House would be a really good synopsis of, of that. Looking at the Senate, though, we did make gains in the Senate. And that is really what uh, President Trump was focused on, was either maintaining or gaining in the Senate. And that's what he did. Question directly for you, John, because you're here on the campus of the University of Arizona. We heard a lot about the youth vote. So the morning after, are you happy with the turnout of the youth vote? Or once again, it just could have been better? I think I'm satisfied with the you know, turnout of the youth vote, and I've seen a lot of people on campus going out to vote, especially with the uh, voting station that we have here at the uh, Student Union. And overall, whether it was Democrat or Republicans that they came out to vote for, we saw a lot of engagement. And you know, from the Republican side at the party headquarters, well, the party headquarters for our party, <laughs> last night we had a lot of college Republicans as well as people that we never knew were involved in, you know, or interested in politics on campus that showed up. So it shows that uh, there's a lot of interest and engagement going on. We've got some very deep divides coming out of this election. Do you have any level of confidence that those divides can heal or are we just gonna keep them going and run right into 2020? That depends. It, it depends largely on the tone that the uh, commander in chief and the president uh, uh, set. If, if he reaches uh, his hand across the aisle to work with uh, the uh, congressional leadership, I think it'll be reciprocated. That said, there's a big wild card out there, and that's the Mueller investigations and all the related, but not necessarily under his, uh, his control. I absolutely think it's possible, but again, it comes down to the members of Congress, and again, too, the president has to reach across the aisle to be able to do that. I think he will. Uh, he realizes the situation he's in with a divided Congress, and again, when it comes to uh, bipartisanship, both sides have to want to have that same mindset in order to get something done. And I believe that that's possible. I believe it's able to be accomplished, uh, but we'll, time will tell. And 2020 will be the true referendum on whether President Trump's been successful or not. Let me ask you both to switch roles, if you will. Uh, Gary, I want you to think like a Republican for a minute. John, I'd like you to think like a Democrat for a minute. Where would you like to see the opposite party, if you will, go leading into 2020 <laughs> and beyond? Well, I'd like to see the Republican Party of my parents uh, and my grandparents. I was the first member of my family to register as a Democrat. I'd like to see the Republican Party uh, go back to its roots as a party of fiscal responsibility because it's abandoned that plank. 
I'd like to see it uh, go back to being a party uh, that uh, was promoter of free trade instead of anti-free trade. I'd like to see the Republican Party uh, hold itself accountable. I think our best hope for that is Mitt Romney in the Senate. Uh, I think he can uh, fill the shoes that, uh, that John McCain left uh, so big and vacant and empty by uh, standing up as a voice to uh, counter uh, the worst instincts of our current president. I think that it'd be great to see the Democratic Party shift more towards the role of when John F. Kennedy was president, traditional, or what would you call it, a traditional liberalism, I guess you could call it, and kind of focusing on kind of, you know, economic issues and uh, working with Republicans on a lot of things. All right, John Dalton, Gary Jones, thanks so much for sitting down with us uh, the day after the election. Thanks. Thank you.